Hello, everybody. It's Steph and Satani. Big Steph, Stephalophagus, Steph up, Steph up to stomp the yard. Papa Steph is coming at you with a heaping helping of entertainment. This next episode of a Comedy Advice podcast is, it just slaps, slap, 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 but in a nonviolent way. It slaps your taste buds. And if your taste buds were on your brain, your brain buds, because your brain buds are going to be like, mm, that is some sweet, that is some sour, that is just a complex harmony of flavors. And one of those ingredients for those flavors is my guest, Jordan Power. What an amazing comedian, author of the book, Famous Anus. And we talk about some stories from the book, including how he found out his dad was gay and an orgy with 26 men, whether Jordan decided to participate or not, and so much more. It was a great time. So follow him. Links are in the show notes. Support that dude. Support me. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe wherever you can. Leave a comment. Say hi. Don't say howdy. I hate howdy. But say anything else. Konnichiwa, uh, ciao, or hola. And I, I love all that stuff. So you guys, and, and for all of you supporters, the Steph Army. Oh, I don't like it when Army is a group. I like maybe the School of Steph. That sounds better. The, the College of Steph, you guys have been amazing. You, you have been just so bright in this bleak environment. And I am so lucky to have you. My heart is pumping with joy and with love. So love all you guys. Love all you newcomers too. Welcome. Stay a while. And that's it. I'm going to let you get into the episode. Hey. hey, Jordan. How are you? Good, man. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. I'm uh, a little stone, but like in a good way. Like, I'll, I'll crush it. Oh, perfect. You know what? Okay. Me too. So we're good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, I just did like a different kind of edible and I was just like, oof. Like the um, dosing's this, you know, the dosing's the same, but then it's also like, um, you do it and the dosing seems like, I don't know, 50 milligrams, but it's a different yeah. brand and it's like an entirely different experience. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you do like a different blend of indica or sativa as well? Or was that the same? I don't know. I usually, honestly, I just like pick the person usually there. That's like the most stoned. Like the one who looks like a burn. Because <laughs> we have like stores here. I go to like the burnout. Like I, the person who looks like they're like on the edge. And I'm like, hey, what's good? Because they oh, know because you... they burn their brain out, right? Dude, that's so smart. I remember my wife was telling me, she was like, you want to go on the side of the road, you see those restaurants, you go to the ones where there are all the truckers. So if you go to the place with the weed with the guy that's the most stoned, he knows what's good. Exactly. You know? 100%. So I, I don't go for like the, the blonde girl with like all the contouring on her face. I'm like she's oh, no. fucking she's she's been doing this for like six months. I go to like <laughs> the degenerate like immediately. Now everyone's gonna know my thing. Oops. No. <laughs> Oh man. Well, you know what? What a great tip. We can edit that part out if you want. So you can Oh no, no, you can use anything. First man. Dibs. Cool. <laughs> I signed up for this awful business. So whatever. <laughs> oh man. Well, it's great, by the way, to have I see on your background mentionable, but I think I just see enchinable. It's but you know what? Be, hold on. Unmentionable. Un yeah, but I can't fit it in. And I've tried many times and I just said, you know what? Fuck it's a pandemic. I don't That's care huge. anymore. Yeah, I, I, I wish I had the problem of not fitting it in. But you know, it's it looks beautiful as it is. It Thank looks, you. I, I've seen it on your podcast as well in the video versions. And oh, right on. What episode did you watch? I was watching. I watched the first episode and then I watched a couple afterwards. I watched one oh, nice. with the, um, the uh, I forgot her the name. The ball dildo? She... Please tell me that one. No, no. <laughs> if anyone's the... listening to this right now well obviously there's lots of people listening this what am i saying but if you're like listening <laughs> to this and you're like i think i'm gonna kill myself don't kill yourself because there's something to live for and it's an episode of my podcast called baldo <laughs> and i had a guy on who was probably mentally ill and he made the world's first ball dildo so you put it on your nuts i i shit okay. you not i'm not even kidding you it raised fifty thousand dollars on indiegogo this is the economy now nfts fake shit and, be, and this right so he makes this like ball dildo wow. where you put it on your balls it's a contraption and then you shove your balls into your partner and then what you have this thing what he calls a like it holds them in place in this contraption and then he okay. said it's called a ballgasm and that is where you come 
without even touching your penis. So he was banging his wife. And you know what's the craziest part? He has children that live with him. So he's doing worldwide press. He was in The Guardian. He was in New York Post, massive papers, being like smiling with his ball dildo on my show. And his daughters do not know about the ball dildo. They don't know. Dude. So they're going to like one of their friends is going to send this to you. Be like, your dad's globally famous because he's been fucking your mom upstairs with his balls with and his kill themselves. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Those poor children. Right. That is... It's so humiliating. It's really bad. It's bad. And then he was talking about on my show that like he was trying different iterations of it. So basically he had different like off he would fuck his wife she was like the guinea pig her vagina was the guinea pig for the ball dildo and he tried all the different sizes and everything and then he found the perfect one and patented he gave or patented it what yeah wow wow did he uh, i can imagine him showing his research and he's like yep this is on an iphone just me banging my wife pov style <laughs> he's like you know, he said something like i said to him on the show i was like when you went there and you like told them what you want because the whole thing but a patent is like has anyone else used this technology before? Like, has anyone come yeah. up with this? And I imagine the people at the patent office, he like shows them the blueprints. <laughs> They're like, sure, sir, I can assure you, nobody has come up with this before. <laughs> You're literally the first idiot to come in here. <laughs> we're we're going to stamp this on the spot because we, are, we can assure you this is original. It says, no one unnecessary. will ever come in after this. This is it. <laughs> you sick fuck. And I was trying to do this like interview where I'm like, Am I laughing at him or with him? I couldn't figure it out the whole time. Oh my God. He, oh, he's got to have some sort of sense. I also, I'm curious about how he came to that. Like, you know what? I am shoving my wiener in my wife and that's not enough for me. I just, I want to exactly. go balls deep. It, it, when is it enough? Is what I always say on my show. When is it enough? When is it enough to just have sex with a night person? Maybe you get a little rough, but he said that he put, he, this all started this journey because he put ball weights on his, like he put, he put weights on his balls. He said he loves to fuck women with weights on his balls. And then he got really used to that pulling feeling. And that's what he did in the pandemic. Like, you know, people are like starting businesses, legitimate. He was upstairs all hours of the night doing this. Oh my God. It, it almost reminds me of those guys at the gym that they're used to doing pull-ups with weights on them. He's like, nay, I like yeah. to bang with ball weights. It's just oh, my dear thing. Oh god. Do you think he has do you think he has these really vascular veiny balls? They're just bulging cuz they're so strong from working out. Well, he was kind of alluding to the fact that he had a large penis on my show because he was saying that there was different spacers you had to put in on the ball dildo because obviously everyone has different size penises. So he was kind of alluding on my show that like that he had a big penis because he got to use like, you know, x amount of spacers i'm like i don't know i don't know and honestly the the other thing i said to him about the ball weights like when you're fucking someone doggy style is this too filthy for your show or is it no no it? this is great oh, this okay because i'm yeah. just like i go please so please. he's this is great. he's fucking his wife with the ball with the ball weights do they not swing forward and like bash her in the clit oh man like that's she's got bruises knock. and she's like, uh, and that's maybe she convinced him to go do the ball though. Cause her click couldn't take it anymore. Oh, the so you might. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? You might be right. You might be right. <laughs> and I think of the big dick. I think he might have a very small one. I don't know this gentleman, <sighs> but if his wife, if maybe his wife was like, it's so, I can't feel anything. Try just shoving the balls in there. And he's <sighs> like, all right. She's I'll, like, I'm going to divorce you. Your dick is pathetic. <laughs> So you, your last chance is just to shove your giant balls. He has giant balls, but he's small dick. And she's like, <laughs> okay, just put those in me. <laughs> he's, like, he's like that dog in that movie with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I oh, uh, Van Wilder. Van Wilder, yeah. Yeah. yeah just those big old clackers, meaty oh, clackers. Geez. Well, it's, it's a hell of a world. Anyways, I'm on your show, so go ahead. <laughs> You, you are on my show. And you know what? Listeners, if you're wondering who that wonderful voice is, or if you're watching <laughs> that wonderful face is, that is comedian, author, and just podcaster extraordinaire, Jordan Power. Everybody, snap, 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 snaps, claps, claps, claps. I watched um, a movie last night where the guy was deaf, and they go like this when they want to show you they're clapping, which is like adorable, but also like 
stupid kind of it looks stupid when i was watching it i was like i like i don't want to be a bad guy but they were like they look like they like animals <laughs> it, it i don't because like... they're deaf i mean because of the hand ge- i'm really i'm really digging myself a hole here okay oh, i mean shit. the hand gestures if done by any human would look stupid it's, it's not because they're deaf i protected myself sort of I th- I think I'll edit that part out and just leave that as the clip for Instagram. <laughs> Deaf people are basically animals. That's well, that's I had like... a I had a New York comedian on my show, and she she kept saying yeah. retard over and over on my show, and like I don't care. I'm not like that kind of comedian. I was like kind of laughing, um, uh-huh, and uh-huh. she kept saying it over and over. At the end of the um, interview, she was like, "Oh, thanks for having me on. Uh, do you think you could edit it all the times I said retard because I'm trying to sell a show right now to Netflix." And so my producer and I thought it'd be so funny for the clip if we didn't do that. But for the clip, we just super cut it all her retards into like 14 and posted <laughs> that as, as our clip for the week <laughs> and tagged her in it. Oh, that would be great. Just have a tally too in the top right corner of like number of times yeah. retard was said. And oh, the clip man. would just be called retard. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, that like it's is, a good bit but i don't want to take away your income you know that's fair you know you could run a buyer just send her a, a sample clip and be like hey this is going out tomorrow <laughs> let me know <laughs> by then if it's not good otherwise it will be released is the sound then- good did we get the good cadence <laughs> of the retard like did we do that well just just <laughs> in terms of that part man do, i do, yeah I, I wouldn't do that to fellow comedian if it was like i did a show i was on a podcast called messy talks people are gonna find it now and it was a group Ooh. with a woman I had the, had me on their show and they were like she was like an ex con and she had never okay. been caught by the police. So in the interview, she's like confessing to all these crimes. She's mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, sometimes when things go bad, you just got to stab someone. And then she also said that she st- her, her move was that she used to brick people. She would. And I and I was like that. She goes, yeah, I used to brick her. I go, is that a verb? And she's like, she used to brick <laughs> women and like throw a brick at their head and i asked her if they lived and she was like uh i don't know i i I fled the scene and she was just going on on and then her co-host who was like a semi-criminal was like i don't know if this should be recorded and you know me as a comedian i'm like this should this should absolutely be recorded like i'm egging them on i'm like this is how you get better subscribers right this is premium content i mean this is what the people crave is (laughs) felonies class class five felonies well, people That's- like uh, people like crime nowadays right so i was just thinking like you know maybe That's there's true. an appetite for that there but i also got really stoned the other night and i, I also thought about because i talked about it on my show and i thought right. about somehow the, the tape getting to the fbi and i kept thinking of them listening to my show and being like we got her and then they're surrounding her house and they're like <laughs> We know you're the brick killer. Come out with your hands out. And she's like sitting there like, how did this get out? Because I have thousands of listeners on my show. Oh, right, 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 right. And you know what? It's going to show up as I've seen in documentaries. It started to uh, proliferate the amount of material from podcasts where I can't remember. It was some true crime one, but it's going to be on the unmentionable podcast. Jordan Bauer talks with the brick. I don't know what her name is, but maybe like a. Seems like a Bertha the Brick Harrison. Ew, that it sounds was like bad. A- they were in like a CIA safe house. Like they look like they were in a, like a safe house, like a drug den, like drug den slash safe house. Let's say it was oh. one of those. Okay. But it was just amazing. The girl. And then she, at one point she said that she she sleeps with a machete under her pillow because of the way she grew up. And she's saying these things just like matter of fact, like you know. And I'm I'm going like I sleep with my dog. <laughs> and then at one point I, w- I couldn't take it anymore because I knew they had like seven listeners. So I just killed the Wi-Fi. Oh my gosh. Oh <laughs> I just my... killed the Wi-Fi. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> what an ex see, that's the best way to be able to just end it. I was wondering about that because as I mean, every guest I've had, including present company has been a delight. However, if I'm going on another person's podcast, some of them are very strange and i'm like what's a polite way to get out of a three-hour podcast this is going to be 45 minutes by the way but uh <laughs> what's a what just in case your wife i almost, had, I almost had i have colitis i almost shit myself i was like what <laughs> no 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 <laughs> but but like what is the best way to get out of a podcast if it's running super long or it's it's not going great or 
people are telling me that they're hiding or they are putting uh, scythes and shivs under their pillows because that's how they grew up. And yeah, I put and she, affirmations under my pillow because that's how I grew up. Yeah, it was one of the craziest things I've ever experienced in my life. And, you know, I'm in dystopian hell where like I've, I've been I've done 25 podcasts in the past three months. And like I just go into my den and like it's very dystopian. I put this computer here. There's like lights, whatever. And people just appear all over the world. And it's like, it feels like a human interaction, but it's really not. It's just a screen. Right. And, and yeah, so I, I don't know. I talked about it on my show and like people started, I don't know if it's like a thing now because people were sending it around, I know. And uh, I might be an informant now. Oh my God. Well, hey, you know what? If the FBI listens, you get more and more listeners over there. So that's, it's all for the downloads. And <laughs> I, I would do anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like FBI, if you could just watch on YouTube, because that helps with the monetization there. That's great. You know what? Put you know what you should do too is you should put the really salacious and illegal stuff on Patreon. I do. Or oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, I've or been say, in this game for a while. I had an I had an old podcast that was insanely successful called Shame on You before this. Yes. One. Yes, yeah, and, with your friend Brad. I want to talk about that in a second. And and go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Well, we can talk about it now. I, I had a show where it was like um, we were on a path to zero gay shame. So how do you do that? You just like brutally expose yourself on the mic. And we did. And mm -hmm. it went from like two downloads to like 100 to like it was doubling like every single week. And it became this huge thing. It was downloaded like millions of times. And then, you know, we started getting really like First, we started with people we just had sex with. Like, we really just, because when you're gay, your social circle is just like, you know, it's all just one big thing. So we oh would invite God. people on the I show. I would have ran out. I would have ran out of episodes in like five. So that's You that's little great. puss. You little cuck. <laughs> I'm like, here's my I wife. I can't believe you just said that publicly. I'm embarrassed for you. <laughs> so I, wait, um, four, four women before your wife? I'm also wearing a, a baldo. Just to make sure that you know, after this, oh, can go. I, I actually want. I have an. I want a mask too. Oh, that's amazing! You yeah. know, I still can't believe that the daughters. I'm sure prototypes were out hanging around, and they're like, "Daddy, what's this?" And he's like, "Um, well, I'll tell you when you're older, or, or well, maybe you made up you, something." Do you know why my life is like one big troll? Not only like this is why I'm a comedian. It's very very simple for two reasons. Number one, I'm a gay man mm -hmm, with ulcerative mm -hmm. colitis. Okay. So like God built me and he's like, you're a man, but just kidding. I'm going to make you like men. And you're like, oh God. And he's like, you're going to have to take in the ass too. I'm like, oh God. And then the second troll he gave me is colitis, a disease where you bleed out of your ass if you don't take medication. So it's like, he set me up for that's my sex, but he also threw in like another wrench to be like, it's like another little hard thing in the level of the video game. Yeah. And then the second part is that my dad was um, a, a penis doctor growing up. And then my dad, I found out one day that he was gay. I found him on a website called squirt.org, which is like Yelp for cock and people have public sex. And that was the foundation of my parents' divorce. I, I was listening to another podcast where you were telling that story, squirt.org. That makes yes. me, it sounds to me just at face value, like a brothers and sisters, big brothers and sisters organization, like yes. you know, little little squirts. Little you squirt. help little squirts become big squirts. <laughs> yes, but but it but, is not that. It is, it it's is you getting fisted in an esso station. That's what it is. <laughs> it's like it's not. It's even my friends that are like such whores that they've had gonorrhea and like chlamydia like forty times. Even I, when I told them that story about my dad, they even they were like, ooh. Like, even they were like, that's the dirt. Like, I, I would never even do that. And they've, like, blown guys in nightclubs. Oh, my God. How deceitful of a name, a domain name. And also, dot .org, they should definitely make it, like, a dot .biz. I feel like that would. Yeah, what? Isn't org for, like, charities? That's what I thought. Yes. I thought org was for charities. So, <sighs> I'm not sure. Maybe they'll, they'll a have A charity to for that. desperate, closeted fathers who spend their days feeling penises for a living <laughs> yes each hookup will donate one dollar to restore <laughs> the highway bathrooms that everyone hooks up at anonymously so yes. <laughs> oh lord story. but what a what a crazy crazy story and a crazy way to like find out that your dad is gay and and 
and had a giant penis too. That's the other thing I had to discover because he had photos. And let me tell you, do you know, want to know the craziest part of it? Dude, I haven't even, I've written a whole book. I didn't even put that in my first book. This is like, this is for the second book. But the craziest part was like, I was in such shock about what I found on this computer because like, I truly didn't know my dad was gay. Like I didn't, I had no inkling. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And I just like, uh, um, find this out and i'm telling my sister but because i'm in such shock i just keep asking her like why don't i have a big dick though and i kept going (laughs) (laughs) and it was like a debate how old were you i was 23 but like i'm telling my sister and she's like crying you know like just being like oh my god his life's a lie and like ah she's going on and on and on and i'm like so sick mentally as a comedian that i'm going like okay but like why don't I have a big dick? And then at one point she just turns to me and she goes, would you shut the fuck up about his big dick? <laughs> oh like, my God. I was like, but no, but seriously, like it's not bad, but like, why? <laughs> it's yeah. It's not like 14 in how big was your dad's dick, by the way. If you uh, it was nasty. probably like, like, you know what, when you're younger, how it's so much bigger, you know, when you're yes. younger, you're like showering with your dad. You're like, Whoa, I'm going to have a huge dick one day. Oh my and God. then like this is probably like nine inches, I would say, maybe eight inches. Okay. T- okay. And by the way, I love that he's dead too, because like, we're talking. <laughs> this is like this is like so dark. Cause like he's dead. And like just know when you die on, people will still talk about your dick and like what it looks like, and they'll tell stories about it even after you're gone. Oh, yes, the ghosts of of the dick dicks passed. of our forefathers. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> The foreskins of our forefathers are will be a tale that will be told for time and time again. That is uh, my condolences, by the way, I know I, about your father and um, bummer. Don't, don't get all sentimental. He was a dick. It's okay. <laughs> okay but a big one at that. A big, yes. de- yeah, he was a huge cock. <laughs> but yeah, of course I'm a comedian because then it's like, it's just, it's all a bit. It's like life's a bit. I mean, it's a real sickness. I have a very unique way of seeing the world that mm-hmm. is, uh, I'm not even saying like it's something to be revered. It's just, I have a unique right. way of seeing the world. I don't feel like I fit in. That's what I, that's what I say to my friends. I'm like, even when I'm in mm. a room, I don't really fit in because I just, I think I see through a lot of the BS and like the varnish of life. And so then I, just say it for what it is but until you find other people that are fans of your comedy you kind of feel like you're, you're misunderstood in a way that's exactly why i feel misunderstood because i <laughs> have not found any fans of it yet but i can i i definitely see where you're coming from too though because it, it's it is interesting to think about the things that go through your mind and, and to be able to note them because i wonder if everybody has these weird thoughts that when something tragic happens, they think of something totally random, like you thinking about your dad's dick. But the fact yeah. that you call that out, notice it, and then recall it and are able to package it so that this completely crazy situation where I'm sure I, I was listening to another podcast and it, it kind of tore your family apart. Your dad ended up leaving, yeah. et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Um, and, then, and then dying. But- um, Of AIDS. I, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I thought it was a brain tumor. It was a brain tumor, but that was just a gay joke. That, that oh. I, I, I was trying to break the tension. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And here I go, just pulling us down like a ball weight. Just bam, clack, clack. So so anyway, so that was like a, a spark into comedy. Did you start pursuing comedy after that? Or what was your life, life like uh, the next couple of years after um did you come out of the closet after that or were you so what happened was my mom was like getting her divorce ready and everything and i had a boyfriend at the time which like we always would say was my best friend and then one time my mom was like you're like a son to me and he's like well but (laughs) uh, i told her in her like grief i just was like well this is a good opening she's not really gonna react to this so i was like by the way i'm also gay and then the best part is my little sister's also a lesbian but like a couple years later she said it but mm-hmm. we just like, I think we, besides that, I mean, growing up, um, I was brutally, brutally tortured for being feminine, gay. Like I had a mm-hmm. brutal lisp. I would, you know, I was just a tortured, tortured person. 
Um, mm. And then uh, just a lot of other tragedy in my life, like different things and just not really fitting in. And then kind of that happened and then a whole slew of other things. And my life just started to become uh, hilarious. Like things would happen to me that like no one else could imagine. And so I just would survive those things by making jokes. And I had a, like a phone and at any point in time, there's probably like 5,000 jokes in here. And I just write, like, even before uh, I came on with you, I had a thought about, like, it, this is just, like, literally what I wrote on my phone. I was like, mm -hmm. how funny is it that people are all about body positive right now when, like, 37-year-old fat people are, like, dying? And I just sort of thought, <laughs> right? And I sort of thought of that thing. And I just constantly write the jokes. And then the answer is always, why is this funny? But very much if you decide something like, why is it funny? It's because maybe your sense of reality is off or maybe you're just like you don't fit in. So you find everyone else who, you know, posts a vaccine selfie, you find them ridiculous. But it seems to be a lot of people like to do that. That is a really good point. And I, I was just thinking about um, I was watching this interview with Daniel Francesi, who is Damien on Mean Girls, and he was talking about he's from Brooklyn lived in Florida, then moved to LA, I believe. And so he was saying, oh, people in LA, they're like, oh, it's amazing for everything. Where in Brooklyn, it's more like phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So right. it's, it's really interesting to your point of like, from the outside view, seeing things and being like, that's weird. Like, why am I, why am I seeing people taking selfies with their vaccine or, or body positivity and, and all that yeah. stuff? So I it's, think that's it's really- like a it's like a social intelligence, I would say, yeah. like, because I took this test when I was younger and it was like so crazy for me, for me, how like I take, I took it and there was like, um, I was pretty like average smarts for most categories, right? but maybe like a little bit above, but my social intelligence was like sky, sky high. And I think about what I do for a living and like my background's marketing, which is people and the psychology of people. And then my mm -hmm. comedy is just social observation. Um, I mostly mm -hmm. just talk about people and like the things they do and, you know, mm -hmm. how they behave um, mostly on social media. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like that's just what I've done. So I, I think it's just like, that's my, that's kind of the only, I have to do this because mm -hmm. if I'm going to say succeed at something, that's clearly what I'm the best at. So I just have to kind of commit to it, but I've only been in this business for like, like consecutively with the pandemic on and off, like not even two years now. Um, and I've already, but I, because of my old show took off, we sold out a show in New York city. We sold out a show in Toronto. We were about nice. to tour three more cities. Um, and then I released my book, famous anus great title. Yes. And, uh, yeah. So I've only been in it for a small period of standups, kind of the, the, uh, thing that I'm trying to master. Whereas I feel like podcasting and writing, like, not that I'm amazing at it, but I've kind of hit this master level where it's almost like cruise control. Yeah, I you know. I totally get it. I totally get it. And that that's really cool. And wanted to step back, go backwards into the famous anus, your your book, a memoir of uh, 10 years of, yes. of uh, what was it? You had a, the this subtitle. Yes, the sinfluence. The sinfluence. I wanted to right? give it the gay like slant because I mean, it's a uh, it's written about gay life, but like, but uh, a lot of people enjoy it just for the comedy. But yeah, it's 10 years of my life. And again, it's like it's it's like I conjured it up in a writing room. But there's no way I'm lying because all my best friends are in the book and like the adventures that we had. But the book starts with me, my parents divorced, then I check into a mental hospital. And then I go through a breakup uh, with the person I'm dating for five years. And then I just Ooh. sort of go on this journey of like 10 years where I am trying to find love with none of the tools and no understanding of myself and no self-esteem. And I'm just like a cute guy that like can make people laugh and I have no regard for others or myself. And then obviously there's a, you have to build an arc of people just kill themselves. So my editor kind of, my editor kind of explained that to me because I'm so dark that like, I just ended the book and she's like, no, like there, it has to be satisfying for the reader. Like you have to get to, so you have to like grow because it's just like me being like, a comedic asshole for like 12 chapters and so she was like no you need to like i was like did i grow as a person i don't think i did <laughs> 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 like, 
like i'm like is this fiction now i don't what are we doing here <laughs> she, she was like showing me that but yeah the point of the book is like it's just crazy stories like i went to an orgy in hollywood uh at a guy's condo there was 26 people uh in a condo 600 square feet men just having sex and i had never seen anything like it and the first thing i saw when i walked in the door it was like i walked in with my friend we took we were taking our shoes off and right. there was a guy on his knees just blowing another guy and he took the penis out of his mouth and looked at us and was like hey guys and then like went back to doing it and my friend turned to me and he was like manners even in la that is hilarious oh my god he's just like hey guys if you want some refreshments they're over there in the corner just open yeah the fridge, at, you'll get some high seat literally <laughs> and like tickling the balls and shit and we're like putting our converse behind them we're like whoa buddy and then it was just like i walked in and it was like um, I said this line in my book, I was like, there's nothing that could prepare you for the sight of 26 men, like having sex, like wild turkeys. Um, and then I said, there's a line, this is like, certainly wasn't men playing board games, unless it's the one where Colonel Mustard finds the candlestick in Professor Plum's ass. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like some stupid, stupid line like that. But yeah, that's one story. And then I get chlamydia twice in a week. That's a funny story from the same person. Oh my gosh! Uh, Whoa! Wait! Wait! One! One! Yeah. Um, rewinding really quickly of this orgy with twenty six people going at it like wild turkeys. Did you decide to participate? Did you no. look at it from a logistical perspective and be like, "Here's my point of entry and here's my exit strategy"? No, no I decided. took one of the guys like wearing clothes because most people were naked, and I took him home and hooked up with him. But because it's over sexualized, it's not it's not what you think it will be and there was like weird jazz music playing but it's just it's just like odd and i just didn't even get hard because it was just over stimulating i'm watching this i'm going like i can't even like i don't even know how to process this and like guys would like finish on a guy's face and then he'd just like come over to us at the bar and start talking to us and it's just so awkward because you're just like hey like saw you out there like like i felt like a coach like i wanted to like, give him a high five like you get out there oh my god you know it's so crazy <laughs> it's almost like going to a pink berry and then being like what do you want on your ice cream You're like everything <laughs> i want yes. all of it <laughs> yeah they just dump the whole bucket on top <laughs> and you're like you know what i wasn't even hungry i couldn't even it was so it was too much too much <sighs> too much God. it was like really bad and the best part was the guy that ran it was probably like a white supremacist kind of uh but he was really asian. so like an asian supremacist because he he recruited me on grinder and then told us the rule was that there could only be white people there and so me and my friend were like that's a little uh nazi orgy but okay and we but we didn't even like you know we have no principles so we were just like let's go and we went and then the guy that was hosting the party was the, so imagine like all these men and one of them's asian and it was so he's like an asian supremacist i guess or oh not even gosh. though but he's like a white supremacist in an asian he's, outfit he was like, like dave Chappelle in that sketch where he was blind a blind black guy being a white supremacist right maybe he just <laughs> he didn't see i don't know that's crazy yeah, that is crazy Okay. Um, so that's in my I'm, book. Oh, and then the best chapter in the whole book is I get an anal fissure. And uh, so like I have ulcerative colitis, which is like a bowel disease. So you can get anal fissures, but probably haphazardly shoving dicks in the area on the regular <laughs> does not help. <laughs> like, let's be real. Like, it's not assisting. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> uh, but I was just like, whatever. Again, nature's troll, right? Like, what else am I supposed to do? Right. So. Right. Um, I be, I have so the fissure doesn't heal, so I have to have this surgery where they go in with a scalpel, <gasps> and they cut your muscle fibers to release your anus, because whoa yes, to release your anus because the tension, like, is the reason the it's restricting the blood flow to go in to heal the area. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Right. And so yep. you have to kind of release it so more blood can get in and it can heal. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I had the surgery on my anus and then the worst part was two days later, later, I was like, I was so high on morphine. I was just completely out of it. Like I was taking edibles. I was just like a junkie and I had a lot of pain and I was texting my mom, who's my doctor. And I was like, I think it's infected. 
And then I realized that I needed to, she's like, well, okay. And she's like, you need to go to the hospital. So then I went to the bathtub and like took a shower and got on the couch and had to take a photo of it for my doctor. And mm -hmm. I'm like, have my legs in the air, like just trying to like spread Eagle with my fingers. And I'm doing like, do I do the reverse camera? And then like, do I, like, I'm trying to, it's, it's literally a steep curve. It's a very, it's a very whole thing. Like, you're like, do I spread it? Do I not? Do I reverse Do I include my face? Do I smile in do it? Do I or filter like it? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, your asshole is black and white. I can't even tell. Like, what did you do? <laughs> it's got a mustache on it. What are you doing here? <laughs> well, it's definitely infected. That's a mustache. <laughs> So then I, the worst part of this whole thing was I was so high, instead of sending it to my doctor, I sent it to my mom. I sent my infected asshole to my oh. mom. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> what was your mom's response? And my best friend, but like, that was like a troll. And he wrote back like, I'm in a fucking meeting. Are you crazy? Because I just sent him this like infected asshole. You could still see the stitch. Like there was a stitch going across the hole. Oh my it was God. one of the most gruesome things ever. How did you take a dump? The first time you do it, the doctor told me, he goes, get some wood to bite. <laughs> I said, holy fuck. <laughs> oh when my he, God. And he delivered, he delivered it to me in like the most solemn tone. Like he had heard this before and he just looked at me and he was like, get some wood to bite. And I was just like, what the fuck? And honestly, I did. <laughs> it was like <laughs> shitting. It was like shitting a hedgehog. Like just sharp. Oh. Like a hedgehog with razor blades in their hand at the same time. It was just this sharp thing oh, coming out. Fuck. This it was evil horrendous. Sonic just just tumbling down with yeah. sharp rings. God. And then I and then I could and then it took honestly like six months to heal. That it's so I have a little like mean... skin tag there now. It looks like a clit. It's a little awkward. Oh, hey, that's kind of cute. It's like a Marilyn Monroe little <laughs> mole on there. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I molest someone like Michael Jackson, people will know. Because remember how the Michael Jackson trial, all the kids knew that there was like a beauty mark on his cock or something. <laughs> so if I molest a bunch of people, they're gonna be like, he's got that clit on his asshole, you know. <laughs> Oh my god! They all recognize Michael Jackson because he wore the glove on one ball, and so is uh, yeah. Oh, but damn, god. dude. <laughs> so, so, anyways, by the book is the point, and there's a bunch of other stories, but it's like it's um, it's crazy, but like act actually by the end you'll probably be crying. It really, I really got the arc down. Oh man, crazy. it's a good book. Yeah, That's, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm glad that <laughs> your editor gave some notes too. Because, dude, it, that is such an accomplishment to create a book first off, oh, it's and hell. then to like it's write hell. a write a good one. And I know you're you're writing another one. My therapist sent me nudes. That's a which, real story uh, too. I, I told I I, swear, I will take a lie detector test. I do not make this stuff up. It's just like someone in the simulation is torturing me. And I just keep, oh, 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 look at the clown. Like, that's seriously what, <laughs> that's seriously my life. But I had a therapist sent me nude photos of himself and an Uber to his house at 4 a.m. on Grindr. And I wrote back and I said to him, I'd been going into to him for like three, four months. And there were a couple of weird moments. Like one time I was talking about masturbation and he kept being like, how do you do it? Not actually like that, but it was like, oh, shit. <laughs> he was just like, tell me how, like, I don't know. He kept going into detail. Like, how do you do it? How do you feel? But like, oh, not. God. Yeah. And then uh, and then I wrote back and I was like, is this honestly happening right now? Like, are you honestly sending me naked photos of you to like come to your house? And he wrote back and he said, uh, I've wanted it to happen for a long time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I was like, is that Freud? Is that, is that like a Freudian thing? Like, it's are you so... training me right now? Is this like a is this like a psychological trick you're doing on me or something? Oh my, he's making you his little his little psychology padawan. That's... Yeah, he's like you pass. Imagine I wrote back no. He's like you passed the test. See you next week. <laughs> I mean, shit. That's probably what I would say just to get out of it gracefully or try. Well, I had to write him an email because I wanted to still be professional after everything, and I was like, hey, I don't think I'll be coming in next week. <laughs> After what transpired, sir. And also, Stephen, is this gross? I, I told my friends, I want to make the book. Just call my therapist sent me news. I want to make the cover. The photo, but pixelated. 
So you'd oh. be like, right? So someone tells you this story and you this guy wrote this book, right? Like I am a mar- quite good at marketing, right? And But they tell you that there's also the, the photo that the therapist sent him on the cover. Beautiful. Right? Right? Wonderful. What, by the way, what did it look like, this, this nude? Was it tasteful? What, how did you feel about it? Did it uh, arouse you? He was smart. There's something disturbing about when a person is smiling but showing you their dick. It's, it feels creepy. You know what I'm talking about? Like, if you're going to send someone, like, a hot dick pic, right, full body with the dick in the hand, then just pose. But God he was, like, it. he was doing, like, a jolly, like, he won the lottery. Like, he was just kind of, like, smiling. Oh like, think about, think about that. It's like a flasher. Like, smiling with, like, their dick in their hand. Like, they're going to oh. rape you. Shit. I, well, I was going to compare oh, wait, Why did you have to, to ask me that now? <laughs> but now, yeah, holy shit. Yeah, I think you might have to go back to therapy. But fucking that... <laughs> I have not sent a dick pic, obviously with my track record, but um, I feel like if I was, I, I'd probably be smiling in it. I'd be like, well, well, hey. <laughs> hey, it's my dick. How are you? <laughs> it's, it's, it feels like, it, it, you know what it is? It's like conflicting emotions because it's like sex, sexy penis. But then also the other emotion is like the person's like warm and loving. And it's a mm. weird to feel those two worlds kind of colliding at the same time. I think that's what's happening. Yes. So, yeah, you're right. Because a smile, a smile is welcoming. Is... Like, hey, hey, buddy boy, you want a hug? It, exactly <laughs> like that. You can find folks like that on squirt.org. And <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like anyone can smile at you. So it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's this communication of joy. But only certain people can send you a very precious gem, a.k.a. their dick and or balls or vagina and clit, whatever combo you prefer. And so just together, I can see it. I I guess because, yeah, when I think about it, I don't when I have sex, I'm not like, yeah, smiling like I'm really happy. Like kind of like like cheesy, like school photo smile. That's what it looked like. Like, you know, just like, yeah, like, look at my dick. I'm happy. Oh, oh, man. What what an amateur. I don't know, but I also like I'm used to the I'm used to those kind of photos. Like I'm used to the dirty photos. Okay. Cause like if you go on Grinder, which is an app for like most gay men have, or you can just find guys in your neighborhood, it's really mm-hmm. fun at work. If you like start a new job, then you go to your desk and you like turn it on. There's like 200 people in the office, and you're like, who's fucking gay here? Holy shit. Oh yeah. my god. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, on Grinder, guys will just send you a photo of like literally like one time I just got a photo of a guy on all fours and like a gaping asshole with some sort of liquid coming out. Don't know. But it was like him on all fours with like a gaping asshole. And I just like he didn't even say hello. That was his salutation. Just like, hi. Oh, here. oh my. And he you didn't could, start- like, it was gaping. It was re- not like Asian nice gaping. It was like big. And oh I just wrote God. back to him and I just said to him, who took that picture? Like, Jesus, did you did you put it on a tripod and like got on all fours for it and had to take like a bunch? Or did you literally invite a friend and say like, hey, I'm taking some new asshole photos from Grinder. Would you mind getting a white balance and get in there? <laughs> That's what I, I'm I trying. I just I, I wasn't even I wasn't even disgusted at that point. I was just like, hey, man, can you just let me know how this works? Who took this? Can you tell me your success rate, please? And uh, yeah, I know, right? Hey, hey, buddy, can you come over? Because I really want to make my asshole look like a train tunnel in the Swiss Alps. Can you help me out with yes. that? Is that? How do you get that I'm... discharge coming out of it? That's like very <laughs> artistic. I wonder if he photoshopped that in. He's like, you know what? This isn't enough. I need some more panache oh, around You know what, ash. man? It's like, it's like fucking people who put their uh, dating photos as like them in a mask. And I'm oh. just like, we're all wearing masks. It's like the ultimate virtue signal, disgusting. Like, look at me. I'm like, I'm so fucking great. And now everyone's dating profile is like, like I saw this guy the other day. I swear to God, this is what his profile was. It was like something in, like, if you not, if you don't support BLM, you're not getting in my hole. And I was like, what? Fuck Whoa. Kind of an- Whoa. <laughs> like, wow. Wow. The seams are really coming off society. It's fun. It's fun to watch. You know it Dude. is. Oh, my God. It, it is kind of fun to watch. It's so sad to me, too, where it's like these people that think they are preaching this love are just completely hating on 
whoever disagrees with them. Yes. And I'm just like, dude, I don't know if you're going about it the right way, especially um, bargaining your whole for <laughs> political and uh, systemic racial issues. I mean, wow, this is it's but amazing. It's so like, you know, what? And, and the other thing is like these it just shows that the person's unintelligent because these are such nuanced positions with shades of gray to them, you know, like defunding the police could also be like reallocations of resources or is it abolish right. the police or is it right. like you know it requires good faith exchange with people to actually debate these topics and it's just like people want it it's because they're so boring it becomes their identity because they yeah. have nothing else to offer and they finally are going to get attention for something in their life they're like okay activate the tribalism who's my group and i saw like i see people now it's like their their profile is no longer like Jeff, accountant, snowboarder. It's like Jeff, polyamorous, non-binary, double vaccinated, mask emoji, BLM Marxist. Like, you know, <laughs> who loves coffee? Now you got to add the <laughs> coffee lover because that fucking, you know, people. It's just I'm like, I'm like, I get it. Like, I get the whole psychology of it, but it's just grotesque. It's grotesque I... that you get a vaccine and you like make it you, you, your your thing like like millions of other people haven't also experienced this it's like those girls who repost their wedding photo every year because that was the only time they were important <laughs> you, i wonder if people are am gonna, i wrong though am i wrong you're not wrong i wonder if people are gonna when their memories show up if they repost their vaccine date one year <laughs> ago today i was a hero oh I saved you all actually it's just it's, they set up selfie stations at our, our vaccine clinic in toronto and i just i walked by and i was just like we are a vile species like like all this climate change shit that i know tons about i'm really like depressed about it but also like i'm just like do we deserve to live like do yeah. like what we've done to this planet like just plundered natural resources just like plastic everywhere microplastics in the oceans in our bodies like what we've done to this planet, it's just like, don't we deserve it? Don't we deserve kind of like, isn't like nature get a chance now to be like, okay. I know. And then we shit on nature's face by taking selfies saying, <laughs> I'm going to live so much longer so I can fuck your shit up. And Bye, like Amazon doing this, this. Like, <laughs> like, I just am like, ugh. But it's good because it filters out the people that you're like, because you see a hot person on Tinder and then you see them in mass. You're like, nope. There, like there you you're go. in a mask alone in your apartment. What are you doing? I you're know ill. Yeah. you're <laughs> ill. Like, you're ill. We used to say that to people when they would identify as a fairy. We would say to them, great, you, it's time to go to the doctor now. But now it's like I'm an other kin. I identify as a fox. This is a real thing. This is... There are people that think they're foxes <sighs> on the Internet. It's just like it's like. I know as a member of the community that people are always like, oh, like, you know, this person's non-binary or like what, like I'm, I, this is the thing I'm cool with like trans non-binary. That makes sense to me. Right. But when you say that you identify as an animal, I'm just like, why are we dignifying this? We used to, we used to be a little harsher. We say, okay, it's enough with the progressivism. Like there has to be an end to the progressivism where we, we can't just let it all fly. Yeah, I agree with you. I wish I had a funny anecdote or thing to, <laughs> I say to add to it, but I do like once it gets to Fox, you should have said that you identified as something that would have been Oh my god, yeah, that would have so, been a great way to wrap it up. So you know what, it's awkward, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna prance away now, if you don't <laughs> mind. So <laughs> in my Fox self, but if this was wow, what a delicious bushel <laughs> of comedy berries and opinions and beautiful conversation we're going to wind down with okay. a little bit of advice but uh -oh. um before we do i like to get nice and inspired with an inspirational quote to help me get through this advice so jordan i want to i'd like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that you know they like to repeat as their mantra when they're not having those good days when they might have a ruptured no sorry not ruptured a fissure <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not an animal. I don't have a rupture. I only had an infected asshole. I'm not an animal. Sorry. Don't, don't give me that. So <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get iTunes review. It's so funny, Mel Joe. I used to like talk so much shit, and then it would just like whatever the joke was, the person would do an iTunes review about it. Does that happen to you? 
pots. Like they'll be like, like one time I said, those people in China will put anything in a hot pot. I said that on my <laughs> old show. And then someone left a one star iTunes review and like quoted me. And I was like, that's going to get more people to listen. Yeah, that's good marketing, dude. That's that's actually really just good. Be, just I love be that. ridiculous, right? It naturally pulls in new people. Okay, I have to get some advice. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Okay, so insp- wait, did you give an inspirational quote? Was there an inspirational quote in there? I'm not really like an inspirational person. Um, I would say like uh that's okay. We I don't know. I mean, I just kind of I don't know if I, I I'm trying to think about something. I'm really I'm really bad at like the inspirational stuff just because it doesn't naturally come to me like i'm just sort of like i'm a comedian right like i think that stuff's ridiculous right but you're right, right. I, I i have a part of me that's more inspirational i just don't take there's a quote about it's like an older quote of just something about uh don't like take life too seriously and never get out alive oh I just yes don't. taylor swift no, yes yes <laughs> hemingway <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just don't take anything that serious. I don't take life that serious. I don't take politics that serious. I take things seriously that should be taken seriously. Love, um, the environment, taking care of my body, you know, um, pursuing passions. But right. like the small stuff and the iTunes reviews and the like mean stuff and the politics and it's all fake. Um, that's kind of where I just, I laugh to survive. I mean, that's how comedian, like the, especially darker comedians, it's like, that's my life raft that I cleave to to survive. So when someone tries to censor comedy, I get so defensive because it's it's my best friend. It's mm. like my coping mechanism. So I feel, when I feel the moralistic types of people coming into comedy, they, they don't realize they're taking away my thing that I need. Yes. And, and their thing might be exercise or yoga, but I got my thing. So when you then try to censor comedy or moralize, you try to, you take my coping mechanism away. And I don't think you have that right. So that, I think for me, that's the greatest argument for freedom of speech and comedy is I don't even get into the more granular stuff. I just say like, no, I get to have my coping mechanism. Wow. Beautiful. That, uh, I think I, I got a, a Jordan Power original. I laugh to survive. I feel like there's some inspiration in that. <laughs> or maybe you know people that are about to kill themselves they can they can use that maybe chuckle giggle chortle yeah yeah bomb. exactly yeah yeah all right well, i mean beautiful. they don't kill yourself you have so much to live for there's more variants coming and uh more icu capacity i mean i saw the indian variant today said it was 10 times more contagious and i was like are we getting out of this thing or is this just like our thing now like that's, that's a why dark thought that's why we need everyone to go out and take selfies that to show that they've gotten the vaccine so that we can see it makes it work quicker it. exactly most people don't know that the side effects it, of the vaccine the, the moderna vaccine is you have to take a selfie with it oh yes in the control group versus the test group the control group used no hashtags in their selfie and they got five percent sicker right so also the cdc says you're supposed to wear two masks but if you're ugly one of those masks should be on the top half of your face. Correct. Th- yeah. they, uh, the CDC actually just recommends not wearing a mask at that point, because if you're that ugly, you should just, the burka. Wear, the just wear a burqa. <laughs> <laughs> just, just go around. Imagine everybody just started wearing burkas. Like, that was just the thing. People were like, you know what? I'm not wearing the hazmat suit, so I'll wear a burqa. Dude, I feel like the burqa would be... Uh, I was going to say revolutionized, but I don't know if that's the right word for it. But people no. would start putting like the fucking Nike swoosh on the oh. top and that like the Dolce and Gabbana ones, the Louis Vuitton. The Asians, the Asians would put uh, lights inside. Like oh, my God. Lights. Hello Kitty on on all the sides, too. Yeah. 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 And I will put a gun in my mouth at that point. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I won't even yeah. there won't even be debate. <laughs> there will just be like, we're out of here. Like, th- I needed like- a sign. I yeah. thought it was when, when remember when the white people were bla- washing the black people's feet in the middle of the city square i needed a sign that it was like the end and that to me is the number one sign because i watched that video of the white people washing the black people's feet and they're yelling things out apologizing for i guess like slavery and like being white and they're washing people's feet dang i never saw that video i Go check i don't it know out. where Okay. All right. Well, I'll link in the show notes for everybody to check it out. Cause that sounds interesting. 
<laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> beautiful quote. We're going to go on. I got a quote too, but it's not by any person whatsoever. It's actually by a robot named Inspirobot. And what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man mm-hmm. or woman and just mash them together. Jordan's making a very face. I don't know what type of face, a blank face. How do you feel about this, Jordan? If you listen to my show, I'll never do this. That's what I say. (laughs) Just know this will never be a bit. (laughs) All right, moving on to the end of it. No, I'm kidding. We're doing it. We're Read it, read it, read it. (laughs) Just because of that, and your Wi-Fi better be stable, buddy, because we're going through this. We're plowing (laughs) through this quote. All right, Inspirebot, this week it says, clothes are 50% a type mass to hypnosis and 50% tradition. Hmm. Very strange that that was the quote. And we were just talking about burkas because I feel like we really, we already tied it in right. retrospectively. Right. Yes. So ladies, get re- get your burkas ready. They're going to hack off your clit soon. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't have a clit, but just thinking about the damage being done to a clit like that, it I said, makes- you know what I said on my show? I, I was talking about some, some thing in Iraq and it was like some throwaway joke about like you go there and there's like a bucket of clits on the side of the road or something ridiculous. And some girl was like, Souvenirs oh, I can't believe- on your way out. Yeah. And she's like, I can't believe you make jokes about female circumcision. I was like, no, 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 no. I go, why that disturbs you is because you don't even want to think about it. And I just made it real for you. I'm not say- saying I'm pro female circumcision, but right. see how comedy just kind of illuminates things for people. And then they blame the comedy. When really mm-hmm. they're just uncomfortable with real shit. Yeah. And, and I mean, there, the, it might be a little hyperbolic to say there is a bucket of clits <laughs> right. in Iraq, but it is mentioning and playing off a fact that there is that type of activity happening there. And some people are like, oh, I don't like hearing about that. I like hearing about what's happening next on the wire because that's my comfortable life. And I'm um, just thinking or the mass singer for people who are retards. Oh, I my mean, God. I, I know you, know you shouldn't know say that word list is. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, 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 I would. I would kill the Wi-Fi just like Messy Talks podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you pull, if you lifted up your shirt and you had another shirt underneath that said the mass singer, I would just piece the fuck out. <laughs> that show yeah. is for people whose brains have been gorked in a car crash. They have hit their head. And there's no hope. It's like a half vegetable. And they lay on the couch <laughs> and they drool and watch that show. That's who it's made for. It's D-list celebrities in furries. It, I mean, it like, is exactly Kill that. us now. I remember watching it because one of my friends was like, you have to watch this show. It's so good. And I remember watching the first episode and I was like, what the fuck is this? And it's just these people singing off- awfully actually some of them sing okay but then others don't and then they take off the mask and they're like who is it and then they take off the mask and i'm like oh wow i don't know or i don't give a shit because they're just these d-list celebrities that one time it was kermit kermit came out so a puppet inside of a puppet came out and you see these people like like this is the this is the general population just people are just like robots and they just don't even like they just don't even exist. They just like, it's, there's no, they're not even living. They're just going through the motions and just, bleh, and they watch that show. Oh and, my God. And That's... the worst part is that like the judges make millions of dollars. You're right. You're right. And, like, and these non-fictional so... characters, I mean, Kermit, like you said, is not even a real person. I saw one of the characters was a bucket of clits as well. So it's just. <laughs> they just lifted it up. <laughs> See, if it was like people like Casey Anthony popped out, then I'd be like, okay, I'll watch this. You know, yeah, yeah. the Unabomber, but, like good shit, like exciting people. What song did Kermit sing? Did uh, did you watch that far, or did you just turn it off? I, I played the clip on my show, one of the episodes. I, I play it like every week, and then people are like, "You need to get a life." I'm like, "No, I'm never letting this go." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm in till the end." I play. Cl- I played when Caitlyn Jenner was on. Like I just, it, you don't even have to sing. Caitlyn Jenner can't even sing, so she's on the show singing. And like, it's not even good singing. Right. Right. So then you're like, I don't even care who this is because they're like, horrible. How is this not the singer. end? How is this not the end? Let's be real. Like it would be imagine thinking that it's going to get better from for the next 20 years. Like, that's a funny thought. It's a funny thought to be like, we're headed good places. Like, <laughs> no, that's not what's coming. 
eh, it would incorrect. be correct. You know what? If they changed it, maybe the next season, if they are bad, then they have to keep the mask and suit on forever because and nobody <laughs> ever, they're just anonymous forever. You're, you're green frog from now on. They're already anonymous. Why do you think they're on that show? Cause they're uh, irrelevant. Yeah. They take off the mask and I'm like, I know you less now from uh, their agents. Like, okay. So all we have left is mass singer or like celebrity rehab. So like pick one, like the, there's no other options left. So like, <laughs> all, these are the only doors left for you. We could get you a brief stint as a cameo appearance on the bachelor, but we know that that's the last option. So <laughs> masked singer. So, Oh geez. Okay. Well, beautiful. Now that we're nice and inspired, <laughs> we've got two questions fans have sent in from the Reddit advice column. Jordan, I'm hoping you can answer these Uh-oh. or help answer these. This first one <clears throat> says being left out. Okay. So I'm 14 and a couple weeks ago, me and my friends and some friends <laughs> of friends decided to go drinking. Not going to say too much, but let's just say I got an ambulance home and my phone taken off me ever since that day. They've been doing stuff without me, like going on walks without me, but they're nice to me in school. Do I bring it up or do I try to find new friends? I mean, so. where did your uncle touch you on your body? <laughs> let's start there. Let's start technical. <laughs> Who you just said a 14-year-old is blacking out and going in an ambulance? Yeah, man. Yeah. Is, is this America? I'm Canadian. You know, we don't we don't roll like that. That's a little I mean, we oh, were doing dude, that at like this, 17. This is rite of passage in America. This is like right before bar mitzvah. It's just tradition that you get a ride home in an ambulance in America. Oh my god. I mean, I uh, my advice is just to get new friends. You can't force people to love you. But I yeah, mean, what kind of friends were they in the first place if they ditched you after you got your stomach pumped? Like, whatever. That's a good point. They should have been in that ambulance. They, they're not ride or die. They are go on walks <laughs> without you type of bitches. So you need new friends. You need friends that will be with you on that ambulance because I don't know what's wrong with you. But if you're blacking out at 14, you've got a rough life ahead of you. I have so, blacked out in like all over the world. Like I've blacked out on like, like one time I woke up on a dance floor in a club in Europe and I was just staring at this. I had passed out laying like at looking at the ceiling and the bouncer came up to me and he's like, you're out of here. I, just, I looked at him and I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to fight this. Yes. I was sleeping on the dance floor. <laughs> I was sleeping on my back. <laughs> Sir, you are totally in the right here. Dude. Didn't you ever see the lion King Mufasa got trampled by those good wildebeests. You were in grave danger, my friend. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even know. Like, Who's dancing is like, you know what? I'm just going to take a nap like in like blaring music lights. Like, because I just, I think my body was just like, yeah, we've had enough. Like, we're not even going to make it back to the hotel. We like, we have that little energy. And I was probably like, I'm fine. And then I just oh. remember just like being poked and I opened my eyes and there was like a bouncer right above me. And my friends were like, oh God. D- did your friends have to care? Did you, did your friends go on walks without you afterwards? And you had to no, find my friend Paulo always has this line when I do something like bad. He just is like, God, your dad did a number on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they don't call you squirt as like an endearing, endearing name. I Stop like saying that. it. I have PTSD. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> do you know how like I saw my dad, like I didn't just see his profile. It was like that he was into like rough shit. Like, I had so many things thrown at me. Like, dad's gay. Here's his dick. He's into nipple play. He likes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it's like they said it was he was versatile. So that means, like, he receives penis oh. and gives it. And then immediately the first thing that pops in your head is, like, your dad on all fours just getting, like, rammed. And you're like, oh, make it stop. And then you and then it gets brought up in a podcast. <laughs> Mo- there were multiple squirt references. So I do I'm triggered. For- <laughs> I'm triggered. <laughs> microaggression is that what those woke idiots say now you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give you the squirt vaccine by continuing to just squirt in your ears the same word and then i think you're gonna get you, afterwards you can take Pick. a selfie on the podcast let's be like this <laughs> make it stop daddy no daddy no oh my god oh all right well we've got Next our last question, question. 
yeah, yes. we got a last question before we end this podcast on a, on a hopefully not sour note. It says, Ahem, I don't know how you guys will react to this, but chapstick on men? I personally usually don't get chapped lips. I don't know why, but it almost never happens. When it does happen, I do put on chapstick. It just feels like I'm putting on clear lipstick, which is weird to me. Any thoughts on it? Men are so stupid. And I say this as like a half man, half woman. Because I have a unique mind, right? Like, they do MRIs on gay men's brains. And I shit you not, you can look this up. They're basically, like, half man, half woman. So I'm, like, trapped in the worlds of, like, wow, how ridiculous men are and then also how ridiculous women are. And I have a unique take. Like, I, when I see okay. straight couples fighting at the grocery store, I will abandon my items and follow them. Like, I'm stud- studying some sort of wild animal because they're complete opposites trying to love each other they're so different in every way and men and women are just entirely different i know i have all kinds of friends and like i know they're they're fighting and it's my brain fighting because the alpha in me and like the goal driven is one but then i'm paralyzed by emotions damn (laughs) so no chapter so the answer to the question put it on your asshole (laughs) put it on the other lips on your body um so is it just like no my my general point was like it's just like is this how men behave like they think this matters like is this like a like my masculinity is like at risk if i put this substance on my lips like is that where we're at now i think that's what's happening where if there's a trace of like oh i'm not being masculine right now then and if they're insecure with that like oh my gosh it, it, am i not straight or I, I mean, obviously it's a spectrum, but <laughs> I mean, I don't, and I don't know, Good maybe save. they caught them, maybe they, maybe they caught themselves. They were putting on chapstick and they were like, mm, fucking her, puckering up the lips. Imagine then, he wrote a con- another comment underneath and he's like, oh, by the way, I'm also taking a dick in the ass at the same time. Like, does that make it gay? <laughs> like, is that kind of gay if I'm getting fucked with the chapstick on? If I say no homo, does that cancel everything out? Or does the, you know, the chapstick Can I have two dicks in my ass if I say no homo? <laughs> you should start a, you should start a Quora where you ask questions like this. Oh, I love this. Quainal, maybe I'll make it. Because it's like a Quora. I don't know. I'm still workshopping the name, so we'll figure that out. But Quainal sounds like what that guy with the very gaping asshole had when he took that, the picture. That's a, yeah, I could, I could, it, it rolls off the tongue. You're like, oh, that's a quaino. Quaino. <laughs> he's got that, that's he's a- got that quaino, you know, because <laughs> it's like with women, the vagina is like, it's just so int- people have in- different assholes, but also like women have different vaginas. I know this, I've seen a couple, just one actually, but um, I knew that about women. Like, I was like, it's like, if you have, if you're with a girl, right, you go home with her or whatever, you like reach down her pants, it's probably going to look like somewhat same, some more lips, less lips, whatever. But when you're gay or you're a woman that hooks up with men, there is a moment that you have to realize like, here I go. And what could be down there could be two inches or it could be 11 inches. There's a huge continuum of like, is it a micro penis or is it the biggest penis ever? And if you like the person, that might be the penis you have to wake up to for five more months. So it's a huge moment. Whereas you go down, you're like, eh, lips, whatever. I've seen a bunch. Dang. Dang. Well, well, wait, 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 wait. I have touched six inch clits in my life. I tell you. I have seen some throbbing clits in my day, okay? And I, I have to say there are, it's, it's kind of like well-kept drapes. I think sometimes you might have drapes that are too big for the window. Sometimes you have some that are too small and then other times they're just right. So I feel like as it lays out, you can kind of see the cavern or the cavern's completely closed or the cavern's ready. It's waiting for act two in an intermission. And Is so- that, but it, Hold on, now do the pussy. No. <laughs> so- <laughs> Now do the vagina. You're talking about the huge lips on the asshole, right? Right? <laughs> oh, God. Have you ever put your dick in a girl and like gone in? I know there's only five, you said. But think of one of them. And you put it in, you're like, ooh, that's loose. How's that happen? Mm. Mm. She probably listens to this. Mm. She's going to know who she is right now. She can feel the air just gaping at her. 
right out of her. All I, oh my God, like one of those caverns in Croatia, just whoo, the gentle just, howl. Yeah, just so tumbleweed goes by. The howl of all the exes that have been inside her and just drilled the way into that cavern. And they all had um, that same look when they went in, right? Like they couldn't all hide it. Like they went in, they're like, what the fuck? Banging around. Oh. Like, oh my God. Just the, oh, so you think she was born that way? I thought it was, was. No, stretched. I meant she'd been. Yeah, she'd been Artificial. like, yeah, she'd had Cloud. a lot. She, yes, and she, you would go in because it's like it tells you something. It tells you a story. You put it in the vagina. It speaks to you. It speaks to you and talks about its history. It, it talk, Think about that. It's telling you like, I've had a rough couple of years. Sometimes when you stick it in just in the right, if you hit the button, the G spot, <laughs> Morgan Freeman will start narrating. A long time ago, <laughs> this vagina was smaller. <laughs> But Ray Ray came in and destroyed the whole thing. So anyway, is it, Ray Ray Kim Kardashian? Or is Ray J? Sorry, <laughs> Ray Ray is Ray J's brother. So okay. there's the whole there's the Ray dynasty, and so we've okay. got Ray 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 J and Ray, just Ray actually. But nobody talks about him. <laughs> oh right, well, no chapstick it is, and that's the end of the podcast. So Jordan, first off, I wanted to say huge thank you for sharing details of your life of just squirting me and the audience with knowledge, jokes, and just an overall good time. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I loved it. Dude, and where, th oh, thank you. And where You're can like, It's not over yet, yeah, relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got the next segment where what we Hold choose on. what animal we identify cut as. Cut the Wi-Fi, right? just give me one second. <laughs> That's I was how I about exit. To, I was about to profess all the crimes and the, the shanks that I have under my pillow, but... <laughs> But that'll be for another episode. Wanted to ask, where can people find you? What have you got to plug? Uh, what have you got going uh, on? So my podcast is called Unmentionable Every Friday. Uh, it's on all players, and we put it on YouTube, uh, too. We just kind of, yeah, more, more people listen. I like it on YouTube. And my book's called Famous Anus. Um, and, yeah, that's basically it. If you're a homosexual listening to this, I have an old podcast called Shame on You. That's like, it w was honestly an amazing gay podcast. It was really good. It's art. You can listen to it if you go and like, the, there's like 10 episodes up, but then I Patreon the rest of it. And there's like 70 hours on there. So nice. if that's something that is interesting, but if not, just listen to my show every week. And if you're easily offended, which is probably not your podcast, then please like just leave me alone. Cause I don't even want to play that game anymore. F fair enough. I yes, don't care game. about your DMs. I'll just block you and then oh. it'll just be done. Nice, nice. By the way, I didn't get the chance to ask, but Famous Anus, was that the first suggestion for the title or did you work up to that? What what were some other ideas? Um, I just thought of it one day and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And then I immediately thought of the cover, which is it's a anus in a tuxedo on a uh, <laughs> on a red carpet. And the leg is the Angelina Jolie leg from the Oscars. Like I and then there's a marquee that says Famous Anus and the funniest thing is like I use this really conservative uh, graphic designer that's like really good, but like comes from like a really strict Muslim family and, you know, doesn't even talk about sex. And I had to message him and I was like, hey, like I hired him for, for the book. And then he was just like, I was like, you're, you're going to get to do the cover, blah, blah, blah. And then I was sent him all the instructions and it was like he almost had a heart attack. And then we spent a good three days going back and forth because the anus wasn't right. And so, like, imagine this, like, really conservative guy. And I was like, hey, it needs more, like, pucker. And, I'm, like, it needs to, like, really look. And I'm like, it looks like a flower right now. At least to be the more pucker. And then I'm sending him Google image photos of anuses. And I was like, like, this one, but, like, less like this one. And he's, like, he told someone later that he was, like, completely and utterly mortified. But I'm like, we got we to gotta get this done. <laughs> we don't do it. doesn't care about your feelings. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. That is... An incredible story. You know, it, I love the title too, and I wanted to laud it because it is very good. And I, it made me think of if there was a previous book <clears throat> called Almost Famous Anus with the sunglasses from Almost Famous, but just instead of eyes, oh. buttholes behind it. You know what? I could do a prequel. Uh, I could do a prequel and I'll send you a check for you know $14. Oh, perfect. Because I care I about gonna... you that much. I appreciate that. That's much more than a lot of my friends, you know, so that's amazing. They're dead. It's COVID. I was going to ask. <laughs> They're dead. Your friends are dead. <laughs>
Stop. They're all dead. Pretending they, they're all dead. They all had huge dicks, but now they are. They're dead. So it's okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm so. You're. Oh God. I'm so sorry, Jordan. Well, listeners. Thank you so much. You guys have been amazing. You've been here and this far, you made it all the way through, even through the masked singer talk. Congratulations. Thank you so much for listening and loving. Don't forget to su- subscribe, leave a review, and follow Jordan. Support him. The links are going to be in the show notes. Smooches to you and your Gooches. <laughs> and that's the end of the episode. Wow. Thank you so much for listening to the whole thing. I'm glad that we can finish together you guys have been little angels little treats little delights and you know what make yourself known follow jordan support him dm him let him know he had a you had a great time listening support me follow me Uh, and links are in the show notes for all that love and support you can give you guys are true treasures and i'm gonna bury you and mark an x so um, the next people can find what a great treasure you are much love and have a great life Mwah, gooch smooch.